It's finally here. Say hello to the 2021 iMac. It's a beauty, it's a beast, and it's here to take that coveted spot on your desk as an all-in-one computer that has the power to do whatever you wanna do and also look really good while doing it. In this video, let's break down all the changes to the 2021 iMac lineup. The big changes, the small ones, and answer the question, was this update really worth waiting nearly 10 years to get? Is it really worth its price tag and waiting all that time? Let's discuss. Apple's April event just wrapped up and the company gave us a lot of really exciting updates and announcements with different products and features and there was a lot to get excited about, but chief among them has gotta be the all new iMac lineup. The iMac has gone nearly untouched in almost 10 years and now it's getting the royal treatment, it is back in the spotlight and Apple has some big changes to present with this new computer because it's basically all new on the inside and out. Now, originally we thought Apple was going to make a much bigger departure from the current iMac design we have now and go with something a lot more similar to that of the Pro Display XDR with super slim bezels, a wider display, and other characteristics like that. And while that kind of does exist, some of that DNA is here with this new iMac, the 2021 iMac actually looks kind of similar to the iMac design we've seen for a while, but it is fresh and new and updated to kind of lead iMac into the years ahead with uh, new colors, slim bezels and a whole lot more. One of the most striking things about the iMac is of course the new colors, which I'll get back to in a minute, but also just the sheer size. Apple says the volume of this new iMac is 50% smaller than last generation, I guess that's specifically of the 21 and a half inch. And you can see just from this side profile, this iMac is much, much slimmer. You've got much slimmer bezels on the side of the display and you've still got that chin at the bottom, which again is a little surprising, though it does look at least different than the iMac we've had before and also you are getting a larger display in a smaller footprint so Apple says it's about the same size as the current 21 and a half inch iMac but you're getting a 24 inch display built in which is really nice to see more display for less size of iMac. And that display is a really excellent display. Of course, it's got excellent color accuracy and representation. It's going to have True Tone and other Apple technologies built in. And Apple says it is a 4.5K display. So it's super high resolution, great for photo work, video work, playing games, or just going through Zoom calls and working in Google Docs. Another upgrade coming to the iMac is in the form of new speakers, new cameras, and new microphones. So Apple says there is a new speaker system built in that's tweaked to allow the uh, iMac to basically fill a room with sound and sound really good. If you wanna kinda sit back and relax and watch a movie on the iMac or listen to music, you should have an improved speaker system in here to use as well. Apple says it's got a higher power driven six speaker system built inside, and they also say it'll support spatial audio as well, though it wasn't clear if that was only through Dolby Atmos supported content or through Apple content as well. Spatial audio at least is there in one form or another. The new iMac also has a new webcam built in. Finally, a 1080p FaceTime HD camera. I guess it's better than the 720p one, so we'll take what we can get. And also an improved microphone system as well that should help you sound crystal clear on those Zoom calls and video calls, and also reduce the noise around you. The iMac also once again comes in colors, something we haven't seen for a very long time, and the rumors are true, and it's a very welcomed addition. IO on the new iMac is also very interesting. Apple is keeping it simple with just four USB-C ports, two regular old USB-C ports, and two Thunderbolt USB-C ports as well. Also interesting to see, uh, they're changing up the way that the power connector goes into the iMac. So they've got a new magnetic power connector that goes into the back, and then a new smaller power box, a power brick that goes presumably presumably on the floor, but also has ethernet built in. So instead of, I guess, plugging in a USB-C hub to the back of your iMac, you can just plug ethernet into that power box on the floor and it'll get sent to the iMac on your desk. Pretty cool. But of course, there are more changes than just what we can see on the outside, though the design still looks great and I'm very happy that Apple decided to give the iMac an all new look. We've gotta also examine what changed on the inside as well, because in the guts and in the internals of the iMac, there is a lot new. And of course, one of the biggest is the departure of Intel. Gone are the days of Intel chips and the i3 and the i5 and i7s. Now we have an Apple Silicon powered future and you now have an M series chip in here that is super fast, super powerful and super versatile that'll basically let you do just about anything you'd want to on this all new iMac. 
The new iMac is packed with the Apple M1 chip inside, which is a bit surprising because we thought we could see the next generation launch with this new iMac, either the M1X or the M2, but I guess we can't complain. The M1 is still a super powerful, super versatile chip that is here to really supercharge the iMac, not just with performance, but some other new additions and nice features as well. Speaking of performance though, of course, Apple says this new iMac is just blazing fast. They say it is 85% faster than the previous generation, assumedly with an Intel chip inside. And it also has two times faster graphics as well. So the M1 chip, again, super versatile, uh, very powerful, It'll get you through video work, photo work. I mean, it is a absolute beast of a processor that should really supercharge the iMac experience. Another benefit of having the M1 inside is better efficiency and better cooling. Apple now says they were able to really significantly uh, kind of redesign the cooling structure of the iMac to allow just two small fans in the newer iMac design, which should help this machine stay much quieter and uh, make it much less noticeable on your desk while you are doing rendering or anything like that. You will still have fans, so it will still cool down in some capacity. It's not totally fanless, but it should be much cooler than that big hunk of aluminum that I've got sit back behind me, that older iMac design. There's a new Magic Keyboard that has an emoji button, a spotlight button, a do not disturb button, a lock button, and some different colors that'll match the new iMac, which is super cool to see. There's also a new Magic Keyboard that has all of those things, plus a built-in Touch ID button. So for the first time, you now have wireless Touch ID you can use with your Mac, and hopefully this would work with other Macs that are not just the iMac, but right now it's officially supported with the iMac, which is super cool, works for authentication, and also for fast user switching. So if you have uh, a family iMac, that you have multiple people use, uh, you can basically use Touch ID to switch between the different users of that computer super simply and super easily. Apple also introduced some new color matched magic mice, magic mouses, and also some color matched Apple trackpads as well. So basically all the accessories are getting a new splash of color and some new additions with the keyboard side to make it very versatile with that new iMac, a perfect pairing. And of course, last but not least, in terms of pricing and specs, Apple has basically two tiers of iMac that you can buy from their online store or in person. For $12.99, you get an eight core CPU, a seven core GPU, eight gigs of memory, a 256 gig SSD, two Thunderbolt ports, and a Magic Keyboard, and four different color options to choose from. If you jump up to $14.99, you get all seven colors to choose from, plus an eight-core CPU, an eight-core GPU, eight gigs of memory, a 256 gig SSD, two Thunderbolt ports, and two USB 3 ports, Magic Keyboard with Touch ID, and Ethernet. Presumably, of course, these are just kind of the base configurations. You can jump on the Apple website and configure specs and uh, other details on stuff you'd want inside and colors and stuff like that. But these are, as we know right now, just kind of the base configurations and the two sort of standard uh, spec models that you have to choose from and the pricing that goes with those models. So with all that being said, is the new iMac as it stands in 2021 a good buy? And honestly, in many videos, we go back and forth on comparisons. Should you buy this one? Should you buy that one? But I'm gonna make this super simple. Yes, in very few cases and with very few exceptions, the 2021 iMac is the computer you wanna spec out and pick up, especially if you're comparing a 2021 iMac versus an older one with the older design and older chips. The new one just makes so much sense for so many reasons. You're getting that gorgeous new design, the larger display, you've got the more powerful Apple Silicon chip inside. There are just many, many reasons to go new iMac than there are to go old. Of course, if you heavily rely on Intel and you don't want to take any chances with the Rosetta translation layer, even though it does a pretty good job. Like if you are really dead set on Intel, then yes, you can go with an older iMac. You can also go with an older one if you wanna save some money. I'm sure the used market is about to get flooded with people trying to offload older looking iMacs like the one behind me. And you could probably pick a good iMac up for a very good deal. Just keep in mind, it's not gonna be as powerful, versatile, or have the new design like the 2021 iMac. But if you're looking to save some money, you can go with the older one and have a very good machine. Though if you're looking to buy fresh, you definitely wanna go with the newer one. Another common question and a good question to ask is which computer most people should buy? For the average person who's not in Final Cut or in Photoshop or in Logic, who's just browsing the web, checking their email, watching some YouTube videos on Facebook, whatever you might wanna do, uh, what should that person buy? And I probably would easily break it down to this. If they don't want an all-in-one, like if they want uh, something they can just connect to an existing keyboard, mouse, and display, because many of those people exist, then the Mac Mini is a wonderful option and a great way to go. 
Not only is it considerably cheaper than the new IMAX, but you're still getting a very modern Apple computer. It's got an M1 chip inside, so it is super versatile and still very powerful. And it's a great addition to kind of replace a PC tower in a setup. Though that being said, if someone wants to keep things simple, they want an all-in-one solution with a big gorgeous display and a keyboard and mouse and all that that comes with it, then you just can't go wrong with the 2021 iMac. It's still a great computer, even though many people probably won't even come close to harnessing a quarter of the power of that new Apple Silicon chip. You know, even though they're, they're not gonna go that far, it's still gonna look great just sitting on their desk. So what are your thoughts on the 2021 iMac lineup? Was this a update? that was big enough and um, you know worthwhile enough to wait nearly 10 years to get? Do you think Apple should have done this sooner? Do you think there's enough to justify an upgrade? And of course, which one would you buy or which one are you gonna buy? Let us know in the comments down below your thoughts on the 2021 iMac lineup and which color you'd go with as well. As always, thank you guys so much for watching the Apple Circle. I'm Robert Rosenfeld. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one.